It's been a while since I've done a book review and you probably have forgotten that I even do this series. But anyways, I've been really busy with school, photography and just life that I haven't had time to record this. So I'm kicking off with a bang and move straight into Looking for Alaska by John Green. This is the second John Green book that I've ever read and reviewed. The first, Paper Towns, is linked right below. It's an enjoyable read above all else. The book is not hard to read, using everyday ordinary language and it similarly is directed for teenagers, which is appropriate in my opinion. It's easy for me to see that John Green's work shares similarities and this book is no outlier. This book is focused around a 16 year old teenager boy named Miles who is more commonly known as Pudge. He, for the first time ever, is going to a prestigious boarding school, and this is the location for most of the events of this book. Just like John Green's other works, this book revolves around relationships, friendships, and growing up. At the start, Pudge has one roommate, his name is Chip. He's a very short, muscular boy that takes honor very, very seriously. This earns him the nickname of the Colonel. Across the hall is a name called Alaska, she's as complex as they come. And yes, if you thought that the book was named after the country, it's not. It's named after the girl. She is very beautiful, witty, and ultimately constantly contradicting herself, showing some mental unstableness. You also have Takumi, a Japanese friend, and Lara, a sweet Romanian girl. All of these people are very different in part, but inevitably teach us very important lessons that we need to learn. Already, just a few chapters into the book, we are introduced into a predicament that will seclude what the book believes about themselves and each other. They will begin to question reality. In the first book of this book, around this part, the group befriends one another, learning an increasingly amount about each other as one day leads into next. But the story isn't really focused on everyone. It's concern on Pudge and his admiration of Alaska. This is where kind of the plot thickens. Alaska has a boyfriend. And she loves him dearly. She also loves books and causing havoc. As well as this, she's a very heavy smoker. Ah, <sighs> quite funnily, she is every single thing that his parents told him to stay away from. Yeah, he can do all but that. The group engages in all sorts of boisterous behavior, skipping classes, smoking, and also drinking on campus. They actually get caught once, but use their trust to cover for one another. In the middle of the book, a few interesting things happen here and there. But in general, everything remains rather the same. This all changes in Thanksgiving break. Most students go home, but Alaska manages to persuade Pudge to stay on campus. Of course, he does this, and they get to learn a lot about each other. I'm going to leave the skill occurrences at I'm going to leave the skill occurrences here and let you enjoy the rest of it yourself. So, characters. Alaska is undoubtedly an intriguing character. She leads the whole friend group, is the mastermind behind all the pranks and constantly flirts with Pudge and Colonel regardless of having a dear boyfriend. She leads Miles into a labyrinth of emotions that, after a shattering tragedy, leave him wondering if there is a way out. For some more other thoughts concerning the book, the vast majority of it is fitted with messages of three highly popular religions, Islam, Buddhism and Christianity. We aren't forced to dissipate our beliefs but rather the contrary. Green shows us the similarities in each in a few areas of discussion. These join together in the absolute message of that suffering is the present part of the copious part of our lives. And although we try and escape suffering, there is only one real manageable way. By accepting it and forgiving. At least that's what I got from the book. It's all personal interpretation, of course. Anyways, looking for Alaska is an amazing story that is both funny and sad while remaining extremely compelling. I highly recommend this book for any young readers, or if you simply like any of John Green's other works. By the way, I improved the audio in this video. This is what it sounds now. And this is what it sounded before. Tell me what you guys think.